Hi everyone, my name is Natalie. Today I wanted to do the mid-year freakout tag that I've seen so many people do recently and I think it is kind of a tradition on booktube to do this during the summer even though it's a very old tag and I think the creator of the tag isn't even active on YouTube anymore um, but it is a great way to um, to sort of have a bit of a chat and um, check in with the year's progress so far in terms of reading and it got me thinking about what I've actually read this year because I feel like because I haven't done monthly wrap-ups most of the year I haven't really p been paying attention to all of the books that I've read this year and so it got uh, it was a reason an excuse to look back on what I've got to this year and some of the highlights I am planning to do a reading goals video soonish because I feel like I need to reevaluate some of my goals this year because I haven't really been working on them and I want to um, do some changes on what I'm gonna be focusing on in the second half of the year. So we'll start off with the, the prompts. Uh, the best book you have read so far this year. You might have been able to guess what this one is. It is The Lonely City by Olivia Lang. It is one of the most recent books I've read as well but I think just from the fact that how much it, it so how much it has influenced my thinking, what I want to be reading, um, as well as the the sign that I often have with some of my favorite books is the books that I annotate the most, and this was definitely high on that list. And I think I really got along with Olivia Lang's. Uh, style of writing, style of thinking, the topic is something I find very fascinating and again it has spurred me on to read more in in this kind of thread of thinking um, to do with loneliness, to do with couplehood and uh, I'll talk more about that with another book in this video and just with the various norms related to urban life, to suburbia, and those contrasts, and moving in a city as a body, as a soul, um, existing in, in spaces both metaphysical and um, physical. And I just find it like it, it has really sparked so many thoughts, and I think that is a reason that it keeps being in my mind. The second uh, question is best sequel you've read this so far this year and I haven't read any sequels, proper sequels this year but the closest I get is Raising Demons by Charlie Jackson which is her second memoir. They're not really a series or a duology but they this follows on with the events of the first book so in that sense it is a sequel and even though it's the only one I read of this type of book this year, it is also a really great book. So, um, so yeah, this has got to be it. It is uh, really, really funny, which I think if you've read a lot of her fiction, I don't necessarily think you would expect it out of this, uh, the memoirs. And I've really enjoyed that. I loved the suburbia life, the commentary on... Uh, the expectations on, on a housewife in the 50s, on uh, family life and the struggles of keeping everything afloat, of balancing her all of her various children and cats and dogs and um, doing her own work and just the everyday circumstances in this and how she narrates it. Absolutely love it. The third question is new releases you haven't read yet from this year but want to. First of all it is a uh, portrait of an unknown lady by Maria Genza uh, translated by Thomas Bunstead. I read Optic Nerve by this author last year. Really love that so I have been eager to read more of her works and this is uh, the next one to be published in English. I also have my eye on two books that I haven't picked up yet. So we have uh, Translating Myself and Others by Jim Lahiri, which is a book where she talks about translation. It's already a topic I'm fascinated by and I really love Jim Lahiri's other nonfiction books. So very eager to pick this one up soonish. 
Um, and the other uh, book that I'm really looking forward to picking up is Let Us Believe in the Beginning of the Cold Season by Fido Faroxad. And this is a poetry collection that is published by New Directions. It came out during the spring and um, it is a very popular Iranian female poet. So I would really love to pick this one up in the New Directions volume because it is stunning. Um, and yeah, I'm, I always mean to read more poetry, which again is kind of related to my goal, uh, but I, I don't really do it naturally, so um, I haven't gotten to, the, to this yet, but I will, hopefully soon. Uh, the next question is most anticipated release for the second half of 2022. And I really had to think about this because I honestly don't have... Uh, I don't really know what's coming. Uh, I feel like even if I've heard of um, upcoming releases, I've sort of just been excited about it and then put it to the side and may maybe done some bookmarking or um, saved it in Instagram, but I haven't really kept track of what's coming this year. But there is one book that is coming that I'm excited for, and that is Our Share of Night. Um, by Mariana Enriquez and this is a very chunky book which is interesting because her two other books that I've read um, that are uh, translated into English are fairly brief uh, short books. I've read Things We Lost in the Fire and Dangers of Smoking in Bed I think it is um, and both of those are short story collections and I enjoyed both of them, but I think I enjoyed Dangers of Smoking in Bed even more than uh, Things We Lost in the Fire. And I think she's a really interesting writer and she has uh, an incredible imagination. So a lot of her short stories are just so out there and unexpected. Um, and she plays with very dark themes. So the combination of the weird and the dark is something I love. Um, and I'm very excited to see how she gets on with this very long form of writing. Um, so this is actually already available in the Swedish translation, but I will probably wait to get the English translation, which is coming, I think, in November this year. The fifth question is biggest disappointment this year. I had to think about this one because for me to be disappointed, I have to have had a particular expectation going into it and then be let down. And I think the only book that really qualifies for that is Ghost in the Throat um, by Doreen Nigrifa, I think. Anyway, so this is a memoir by an Irish author and uh, it's about motherhood and she is both she both talks about being pregnant as well as uh, mothering, having young children and taking care of them. And both states I found her to be so, um, so well spoken on and I loved her writing style, um, particularly talking on the, these themes and I thought I would love it because the sections in the first part of this I absolutely loved. But then there was things in the book that just took away a lot from my enjoyment. The the shift in focus on the female poet that she's writing about and the obsession that she has on this historical female poet um, that doesn't really seem to come together for me and the, the, the book as a whole felt very scattered to me. There were parts in this that was just fantastic and then the whole package was just not. So I think this is closest to a disappointment because it could have been a, a favorite of the year. The next uh, question is biggest surprise this year and I've chosen two books that are both brief essay, sort of single essay or short essay collection uh, style writing that I wasn't really expecting much of and they took me by surprise by how much I enjoyed them and how much they got me thinking. So much food for thought. Uh, so the first one is Nukjan by Molly Lindroth, uh, which is a Swedish author, a uh, Swedish book, uh, talking about uh, the life of a spinster and the societal expectations and views on women and the construction of the spinster as a figure in history in, uh, in various media and in real life and she is discussing the idea of the woman living alone as well as 
the couplehood uh, obsession in our Western society and there was just a lot of things related to societal expectations and societal values on women and women's lives and uh, the various pressures that they're uh, there um, to conform to certain relationships uh, and lifestyles that I found so thought-provoking and that actually made me uh, decide to pick up The Lonely City um, because I knew that it would be connecting with some of the themes um, that was the reason I decided to pick up The Lonely City very closely after reading Nukyan and obviously I've really enjoyed that and then gone on to read other books in a similar vein. So I think this book took me by surprise by how much it influenced my way of thinking and and the things I want to explore further and how much I've been thinking about the themes in this. Uh, the other one is In Praise of Shadows by Yunichiro Tanisaki and uh, I don't remember who translated this particular one, I will put it on the screen. Um, might have been Sight and Sticker, uh, usually is when <laughs> when it's an older translation. Um, but it is basically an essay on aesthetics uh, and Japanese tradition and, and art and design. And all of those things I found so enjoyable to read about and to think about. And to think about the, a lot of the elements to do with the design talks about light and shadow and uh, embracing uh, the the beauty of certain objects in their natural state, in their simplicity. Um, I think there was a lot of the values in the design that I feel very connected with, how I view objects and physical things. Um, and what I'm always striving towards when it comes to valuing things um, and objects. So again, uh, a fantastic book that really made me think and both of these are very short but packs a punch. The seventh question is favorite new author. Obviously Olivia Lang, uh, The Lonely City is the first book I've read by her and I it won't be the last. I have already bought one of her other books and that I'm hoping to read this summer and I pretty much want to read all of her books. Uh, so I wouldn't say that, I couldn't say that an author I've only read one book by is a new favorite author, but it is an author that I want to watch and to dig deeper into. Uh, another author that is similar for me is um, Elnaz Vaglanian, uh, who wrote a poetry collection called Prologue, or Prologues, um, that is also talking about motherhood and about identity and things related to um, ethnicity and um, heritage, cultural heritage and being of two um, cultures, being bicultural, bilingual and uh, uh, she's an Iranian Swedish author and I really love the poetry collection so I hope she brings out more and um, she's definitely one of those that I will be uh, watching for whatever she brings out next. The eighth question is newest fictional crush and I actually have an answer for this uh, this time. Uh, I think I've done this tag years ago and I couldn't think of anything uh, or anyone but I think I have one slash two uh, characters in mind and that is Momoko and Ichigo from uh, Kamigaze Girls uh, by Novala Takimoto. It is a book I've reread this year so it isn't the first time I've encountered these characters but I just absolutely love them. Um, Momoko is a sweet Lolita. Um, Lolita is a uh, sub fashion style in Japan and it's all about uh, very big floofy skirts and embracing the rococo lifestyle so it's a very sort of extravagant style of fashion and um, she's one of the reasons I absolutely love her and why I would consider her a fictional crush is that she's so um, unconditionally herself. Uh, she doesn't care what other people think of her. Uh, she doesn't care that she 
uh, gets side eyes and uh, a lot of judgment because she's different and she lives in a very small uh, village type situation and she's obviously standing out with this fashion style but she is completely unapologetically herself and is proud of who she is, really values her own opinions and her lifestyle and her choices. Um, and similarly, uh, Ichigo in this novel is a Yankee and she's sort of an old school Yankee, so she has these like uh, 70s style fashion and um, again she sticks out in terms of um, she has a very unique style, she has a unique set of morals and values and she completely stands by them. They're just so much to themselves but they get on really well together and th this book is about friendship between them. The next question is newest uh, favorite character and I mean this could have been the same as the previous um, the, the previous uh, question but I thought of someone who isn't really a character but she's part of a book <laughs> and that is uh, that is Shirley herself in her memoirs the way she writes about her life the way she writes about herself uh, I've just I've really connected with with these books and to the way she presents herself. I just really love it. Because she's been one of my favorite authors for a long time, it's just it's just been really interesting to see this side of her um, that I haven't seen in her fiction and um, bo both her novels and her um, uh, short stories. Uh, so even though she's not necessarily a character because she's a real person, she is still characterizing herself in her memoirs and I would I would guess that there's some elaboration of things in her memoirs so I'm gonna count this as my my answer to this question. The tenth question is book that made you cry this year and I think this might have been the hardest question for me to answer because I, I don't recall crying to any books this year and it isn't surprising given that I'm not much of a crier in general and even if I am sad uh, by something, I usually don't cry. But I think the one that is closest to this for me is Elena Knowles by Claudia Pinedo um, that was translated by Frances Hurdle, I think. This was definitely emotional, I remember that. I don't remember if I actually cried, but I knew that, I, but I know that I was emo emotional towards the end of it. Uh, it's a very tense type of book. Um, about motherhood, about agency, about agency connected with bodies, of course, uh, and, and the right to your own body and your own decisions. The eleventh question is books that made you happy this year. And for me, I mean, a lot of the books that I read have made me happy in various ways, like the um, the Shirley Jackson memoirs have made me laugh out loud several times. But I think my answer for this is uh, the A. A. Mill and the books I read. So I read both uh, Year In Year Out and By Way of Introduction by him, two of his essay collections and uh, I, I, A. A. Milne is one of my favorite authors. Uh, you've probably heard me say this before. I really love his essay writing and there is something very unique about A. A. Milne's writing that I connect to on a personal level that I can't quite convey why I love it so much. Uh, it's more of a a gut uh, feeling or a, um, a um, sort of instinctual, instinctual like that um, that is hard to really convey in words, uh, though I try. <laughs> so I think he is very witty. He pokes fun at himself. Uh, he pokes fun at the societal group that he belongs to, to his times uh, to to the times that he's he lives in the humor that he brings and the the way that he never takes himself too seriously is just what always puts me in a good mood um, but there's also often unexpected depth to his writing that uh, I think really balances out and, and what makes it also um, 
what makes it really hit home uh, for me. The 12th question is, most beautiful book you've bought or received this year? That is a good question. <laughs> I can barely remember what I've bought this year, uh, so I'm just gonna go with something that was close at hand, and that is Island Dreams, uh, Mapping and Obsession by Gavin Francis, and this is a book all about islands, about maps, and it obviously has a lot of illustrations like this, which we love. So, uh, I mean, I, I don't know if this is the only <laughs> beautiful book that I've uh, bought this year or got, um, but it is definitely one of them. The 13th and final question is, what do you need to read by the end of the year? So first of all, I would really like to read through my summer TBR, I will link that below. Um, and a lot of the books in that list is books I've read, uh, books I've bought very recently. Uh, as well as some books that I've had on my shelves for a while and that I'm very keen to read in the near future. Uh, there is some other books that I would like to read for various other reasons, like Invisible Cities and for uh, the book fairs coming up in Gothenburg in September, and there are a few authors I would love to uh, watch their talks and therefore I would like to read some of their books. Um, I also want to read more of the uh, Brooker International uh, long-listed books, long-listed and short-listed, and I have a few of them on my shelves that I would prioritize. I just got to one of them, uh, Happy Stories Mostly by Norman Erickson Pesadibu, um, and I will be reading Books of Jacob in uh, September with Sarah from Hot Cover Hearts. She's doing a group read. Uh, I will link to that uh, announcement below as well if you are also keen to join in that. And we'll be reading To Mo Sand uh, with uh, Lauren in August. Uh, we're doing a buddy read of that. So Map Booker International definitely is something I would like to read before the end of the year. Uh, and then I have three other books that I would love to read before the end of the year. One of them I don't have yet, but I will be picking up soonish because it's coming out in the paperback this month, I think. And that is Letters from Shirley, which is a letter volume collection of Shirley Jackson's letters. Um, and I'm very much in the headspace of Shirley Jackson at the moment, so that is very high on my list to pick up as soon as it is available and I'm back for my my vacation. Two other books that I already have on my shelves and that I would really love to read this year is uh, Rings of Saturn by W.G. Sebold, translated by uh, Michael Holtz. And this has been on my TBR, like this has been on my priority TBR uh, at least since last year, um, and I bought this one early this year, so would love to get to this one before the end of the year, uh, which, and this is a kind of uh, fiction, non-fiction blend, it's a genre bending book, I think, and I know that it's talking about memory and history and archives and all of the things that I love, and I feel like this could be a new favorite author, so would love to get to this one. And then I have a chunker that I will also love to read this year that I really meant to read last year and didn't get around to again, so maybe this year. That is Duck's New Report by Lucy Elman. I know this talks about anxiety uh, or that the protagonist is dealing with, with anxiety, which is one of the reasons I put it off because I'm trying to, to perfectly time a, a perfectly time it because I'm afraid of how it will affect me when I'm reading it so I need to be in good headspace when I when I start reading this. Um, so probably I will leave it towards the autumn. Um, at least I will probably not be reading this when I'm very busy because I don't need the extra anxiety but I am really looking forward to this one. I think um, from what I've heard of this book I think it will be um, a kind of comfort to read this. I'm apprehensive of when I read it, so that is the reason it's taken a while, but I would love to make it happen this year. So that is the mid-year freakout tag, um, and this year I... actually I'll talk more about my 
general year thing, uh, how my year has been, my reading year has been, um, in the revisiting on my goals because I think I have some more thinking to do in terms of how my reading year has been this year and how it will influence my changes in terms of my goals. So I'll get back to that uh, probably next week. But yeah, that was all I wanted to say today. Hope everyone is having a fantastic day and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.